Order. Call the Honourable Member Darian Fenton. Oh, thank, you, thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, first of all, I want to um, thank the Greens, New Zealand First, the Māori Party and Mana for supporting this bill. And it's good to know that on this side of the House, uh, political parties believe in openness and transparency. Because what and actually are prepared to debate the issues, unlike the other side who have, apart from Nick Smith, and he doesn't actually count when it comes to um, debate. What madness was that from Nick Smith, 1950s, you know, Cold War warrior rhetoric. It was unbelievable. But I also want to thank, Mr Speaker, uh, the supporters and uh, friends and others who have helped me uh, with this bill. And I want to make it really clear that this has come about through a genuine concern about a lack of accountability and transparency for the ports that we own throughout New Zealand that ratepayers own either wholly, wholly or partially and they have no access to official information because of an exclusion in the Local Government Act. Now there's been a lot of talk today Mr Speaker about democracy as, as it should be because it's the 100th and 119th anniversary of suffrage day. And uh, you know, people have referred to Kate Shepherd and asked what she would think about this. It is the day that women uh, won the, the right to vote. And so it is something to be celebrated. But Mr Speaker, just as important as the right to vote is the accountability of those who are elected to office. And those who are put in, uh, put in charge of assets and services that the people of New Zealand own and have built up over many years. It's been, it's been very disappointing to hear the weasel words, the few of them that we've had from the National Party, and as my colleague Chris Hipkins has pointed out, it's been a bad day for democracy in this parliament. We've voted down two bills that would have brought openness and tra transparency. Uh, it's been a bad couple of weeks for democracy as well. We had the ECAN bill where we, there will be no elections until 2016 for the people of Christchurch. Um, and we have also um, had a whole range of other attacks on democracy. It's not a good look for this government. Um, they should be ashamed of ourselves. New Zealand ratepayers, Mr Speaker, have the right to know what's going on with the port assets they own, yet this government has just voted down this right. This government, the National Party, the United Future Party and the ACT Party, John Banks, you know, that pillar of accountability and democracy and transparency, have just voted down, will vote down, the right of the people of New Zealand to ask questions about the way their publicly owned ports are being run. Now, we have seen such goings on in Auckland, and there's no doubt about it, the Ports of Auckland dispute was a catalyst uh, for this bill, but other people have since been in contact with me and said, look, we've got issues about our port too, we own them and we can't get information. But even elected Auckland councillors can't get answers about the Ports of Auckland. They're owned by the ratepayers of Auckland and what's been going on. They asked questions last week and they, uh, the ports company and the ACIL, the uh, council controlled organisation, is able to hide behind, a, hide behind a veil of secrecy and unaccountability. Now, what was really interesting in the debate last week at Auckland Council, uh, the head of the council controlled organisation, Gary Swift, the ACIL, Gary Swift, told the de democratically elected councillors that his board was the port owner, not the council, not the people of Auckland. And look, just to demonstrate, Mr Speaker, how arrogant that is, he sent an email that was tabled at the council, was sent to the ports, ports management, um, that says, in part, the last thing we need is political interference. If they sense that ACIL is not on top of what's happening, and he's talking about the industrial dispute, they may interfere, and it may not go the way we want. The vote 12 to 9 was not a strong endorsement of our position. Now, that is atrocious. What we have with the ports of Auckland and other ports is uh, public money, publicly owned ports, um, no accountability. And under my bill, people could have asked for that information. What's wrong with that? This government does not believe in openness and transparency. The question is that the... 
Uh, point of order, the Honour right Honourable Winston Peters. Before people rush to vote, could I just say there's more sad news, and this is with respect to documents I wanted to table belonging to the Waitaki District Council, and they are the Oamaru, Oama Rama Airfield Limited, Waitaki Development Board Limited, Waitaki District Health Services Limited, Whitestone Contracting Limited, Alps to Asian, sorry, Alps to Ocean Cycle. Is there any objection Trail. to that course of action being... There is no objection. Speaker, I wish to table also... Uh, point of order. With respect to the Far Some North District speech. Council... Uh, he hasn't finished. Drop your knees, quickly. Order, order, order. There's a good chap. Right. Order, order. Can I ask the member... Just be seated. The, um, I had him, the understanding the member had finished. Therefore, the member over here wished to comment on that. I called him. Of the head was not to say I do not oppose leave. It was to say I do not understand what the documents are that are being tabled. No. Uh, okay. I, are I, you, right. right? You're can, well, in that case, can I so, ask? So, can I understand? Honestly? What we have had are two types of documents. One is a list of companies, and the other is statements of intent. We have been not declining leave of the lists, but declining leave on the statements of intent. I'd be interested to know what we just had tabled. Can I ask the Honourable Winston Peters to explain? Please? I'd be delighted to, Mr Speaker. Thank you very much. This comes Briefly. from Section 03 of the Council Controlled Organisations. And the Council Controlled Organisations is an entity in which a council or councils has a, control, a, a controlling stake. This is defined in Section 6 of the Local Government Act. 2002 and the Waitaki, Waitaki District Council has four subsidiaries that fall into this definition and they are as listed by them in their long-term plan of 2012 to 2022. Is, it, is there any objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. No objection. Uh, point of order, the, right honourable, uh, the uh, honourable member, Andrew Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. The document is from the ports of Auckland. I'll say it very slowly for the Chief Whip's benefit. Order, order. Uh, no. No. Oh. The member is, may make a point of order, but it's to be terse and to the point, and it's not to be used to score political points, or I'll sit the member down. Point of order, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Um, with respect, sir, um, and this is a genuine point of order, uh, there was a member who expressed the fact that he either didn't hear or, or didn't uh, understand what the documents were being tabled. The member quite courteously said he would go through it uh, slowly so that all of us could get a handle on it and we could then determine whether we object or not. Members make disparaging remarks about each other in this chamber all the time. It's a personal reflection that is out of order. I call the honourable member Andrew Williams. Oh, we have a point of order? Another point of order? Yes. Call the honourable member... Uh, David I Cunliffe. I seek leave uh, to table both the final and uh, the draft version of the Auckland Regional uh, Events and Economic Development Plan, another provided by a council controlled organisation. Is there any objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. Andrew Williams. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table a Labour strategy memo from memo. <coughs> from the Ports of Auckland as an example of a document that would be obtainable through the Local Government Official Information Meetings Act if the changes proposed by this bill are enacted. Is there any objection to that course of action being taken? Yes. There is. A point of order, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. I seek leave to table a document from the Far North District Council setting out a holding that it has with respect to this legislation that would be affected. And it is the, uh, uh, the company operation owned by the Far North District Council is the Far North... Order. Far North... What did you say? Pig Farm? No, it's not. It's, a, <laughs> it's Far North Holdings Limited, uh, this document here. Is there an objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. The question is that the motion be agreed to. As many of that opinion will please sit. Uh, point of order, the no, Honourable Mr. David Speaker, Cunliffe. I seek leave to uh, table a document from Auckland Transport regarding the transport oriented development in my electorate of New Lynn, uh, a further example of a, a CCO a document, sir, which has not yet been publicly released. Any objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. 
Point of order, the Honourable Member Darren Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table an email from Gary Swift, the Chief Executive of Auckland Council Investments Limited, entitled Ports of Auckland Media Release, Mediation Unsatisfactory Strikes to Proceed. Any objection to that course of action being taken? There is none. Point of order, the Honourable Member Darian Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table a letter from Auckland Council Investments to the Maritime Union of New Zealand that says that they have no, they, no accountability to anyone other than Auckland Council and they won't be involved Any, in uh, releasing information to what they describe as third parties. Any objection to that course of action being taken? Uh, is there any objection? There is none. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, I know that the uh, um, point of order process and the, the attempt to table stuff at the moment is a, a delaying motion uh, so that we don't get the, uh, uh, the uh, Reserves Bank of New Zealand memory primary function of the Bank Amendment Bill. Uh, here's mm. not, I, I can understand why the member doesn't want to progress it. But I want to let him know that uh, we're very eager that he should deliver that speech tonight. Uh, look, that, that, that is not a point of order. There's not a point of order. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Mr Speaker, last time I checked understanding order 3741 and 2, which reads a member may table a document by leave of the House or committee of the whole House. If leave has been given for a document to be tabled, the document must be tabled within a reasonable period of time as determined by the Speaker. Now, I don't know what the Leader of the House, apart from scoring political points, is attempting to do, but it is the right understanding orders for any member of this House to seek leave to table as many documents as they like, and the House or your good self, sir, if they're not within standing orders, determines that, rather than the Leader of the House standing up in his usual bamboozled way, making point spurious points of order. Order, order, order. The member was doing OK. Uh, Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, I'm, I'm, order. Helping, I'm helping out order. your cause. You don't want to get this bill tonight. Order. I'm helping out your cause. Order. order. Look, can I just re order, please? Can I just remind members that when there is a point of order on the floor, it's to be terse to the point, and there's to be no interjections from anybody. Call the Honourable Member. G um, well, Mr Brownlee had a point of order on the floor. I called him before. Yeah. Put, right, Honourable, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, the um, point Mr Cosgrove makes is a correct one. People can table, uh, uh, seek leave to table documents. But it does have its constraints. And the, the member will remember, uh, as well I'm sure you, sir, uh, the uh, occasion where, a, a, with a previous government, there was an attempt to uh, systematically table every standing order from the standing orders document. And that was ruled to be a trifle with the House. And so I think we're in that situation here. I'm desperately keen to hear what Mr Peters has to say about the bill uh, that, that uh, uh, he clearly does not want to talk about tonight. <laughs> Recognise the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, now, the uh, Leader of the House cannot make that statement. Twice. He was, he was counsel against it by you first time. He gets up and says it again, the same way. And then when Darren Fennell was trying to table a document, he shouts out, yeah, yeah, get on with it. Now, that's really a challenge to your con uh, conducting the affairs of the House in a proper way. I'm no reflection on you. It's a reflection on his bad manners. Order. His petulant behaviour when he gets down to the House Order. and finds he's been outgunned. Order. Order. It's one all at the moment. The, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Sir, I, I just want to, given that Mr Brownlee addressed my point of order, I want to address his. You will also recall, sir, and I suspect you may have been in the chair when we were on opposite sides and National was in opposition. And what was ruled as spurious in terms of tabling documents, and I remember the debate quite clearly, was Mr Brownlee attempting to table every page of, of, uh, of the standing orders, speakers' rulings, and I think the McGee volume as well. What was never ruled... Order. Order. <laughs> member knows, and I've said it twice now, that when there's a point of order on the floor, it's be heard in silence. Honourable Clayton Cosby. Thank you. So, as I, as I was saying, sir, my recollection uh, to deal with Mr Brownlee's point where he is, is that what was ruled as a spurious abuse of the process was when he attempted, when he was in opposition, to table every page of the standing orders every page of the Speaker's ruling, individually, I might add, and I think every page 
of McGee volumes what one and two. What was never what was never ruled by any speaker to my knowledge is as an abuse. Uh, is where uh, a variety of members tonight have attempted, quite rightly, to exercise their rights and table individual and different documents. And it is, as I understand it, sir, either for you to rule that they're publicly available, etc., and therefore cannot uh, be, be the, 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 the leave cannot be sought, or for the House to determine whether they'll grant leave. Not spurious sort of points of order uh, by somebody who may have sort of imbibed tonight, sir. <laughs> Uh, the Honourable David Parker. C can, I, can I mention another reason, sir, why, why the process of at times uh, slightly delaying the process of this House by way of point of order is in order? You can see how uh, the government, if it wants to get a piece of legislation off the agenda of this House, can take very short calls, as we've seen on this very bill. And repeated short calls are being used by the government to try and manipulate the process of this House in order to meet their procedural purpose. And if it's OK for the government to use the processes and the standards, standing orders of this House in order to manipulate things in that way, it must be in order for the, for the opposition members to use the point of order process within reason to slow down the processes of this House a little bit so that the government doesn't have its way by its attempt to misuse order, the processes order, order. of this House. Can I just remind members, but I remember the last time this happened because um, the Honourable Margaret Wilson was in the chair and I came in and I took over the chair and there had been some agreement made between all the parties that the issue cease. Now at the moment, um, under the standing order 374, members are perfectly entitled to seek leave to table documents. Um, if it ended up to the stage where it was becoming unreasonable, then I can understand people getting upset. However, I am guided by the documents tabled by leave, which is um, standing order 374. Uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd like to draw uh, the House's attention to Speaker's ruling 1465, uh, which says a member is entitled at any time to seek the leave of the House to table a document. There is no debate about whether the document should be tabled. And further, Mr Speaker, uh, Speaker's ruling 1483. Members do not have a right to table a document. They always have to seek leave, and it is entirely up to members whether or not they object. It takes only one member to object, and leave is not granted. Um, and now, that makes very clear, Mr Speaker, that it is a member's entitlement to seek leave, that members opposite have two options to either grant leave or not to grant leave. And any way uh, you look at it, Mr Speaker, the Leader of the House is out of order. Uh, for having raised uh, an objection, not by way of denying leave, but by way of uh, imputing motives uh, on members of the opposition. Uh, and that order. is out of order. Mr Speaker, I would ask that you would ask the Leader of the House to stand and apologise and withdraw uh, the imputation that he's made on the ethics of members on this side of the House. It's completely contrary as to Speaker's ruling 146 bar 5 and, frankly, quite, quite offensive. Order. Is the member seeking a point of order? The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Speaker, in your very helpful judgment, you, at one point you referred to the reasonable tabling of documents. And, uh, sir, I think that, that leaves us in some slight doubt. I was wondering if you could perhaps describe for us or expand for us what the reasonable tabling of documents you would deem to be in this case. Well... I can only go back on what happened when this occurred in the previous parliament. And it went on for some time. And in the end, when there was a changeover of speaker, uh, the House came to its senses, as I recall. And it decided to move on with the debate. Uh, and as a result, um, the debate continued and members appeared or were reasonable in allowing that to happen. 
Uh, point of order, the Honourable Member Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I want to pick up a point uh, that my uh, colleague opposite Michael Woodhouse raised earlier, which I don't think we've necessarily resolved yet, and that is that the tabling that is to do with the tabling of multiple documents at the same time. And in fact, I've just been, you know, I've taken some time now to read through the standing orders and speakers' rulings, and almost all of them seem to envisage the tabling of a document rather than of multiple documents. And so, therefore, each is a separate question. Uh, and therefore, the House needs to be, because the House may agree to the tabling of one but not others, and so on. And so, I want you to perhaps give us some guidance. Uh, on whether, in fact, it's a legitimate practice for a member to stand up and read out a list of documents that they want to table, or whether, in fact, each document should be put as a separate question, so described and put as a separate question, because uh, potentially, I think, Mr Peters was describing a list of documents before that he wanted to table, when actually the correct process could well have been for the House to consider each of those individually. Now, I'm sure Mr Peters, ironically, was trying to save time by reading out the whole list of documents at the same time, but in fact, but in fact that may have been where we got into some of the difficulty, and it actually may have